Okay, so to move on to the next step of this, let's um, download the files that we need. So I'll put the links uh, in the description for the video. But um, first we want SSH flash win. Uh, so let's go down here and download that. I'm going to save that zip file. So I've got that. We also want RetroLeap, the latest version, which is version 2.00 alpha 4. And so I'm just going to get that. See that that's downloading there, taking a bit of time, but that's okay. And while that's downloading, I'm also going to get data lo the data logic USB LAN driver, uh, which we're also going to need in order to connect the Leapfrog device to our machine. So I'm running Windows 10, so I'm going to pick up the Windows 10 driver zip file there, and I'll just say save file. And we've got that, and we can see we've now also got uh, RetroLeap there as well. So now let's just open the folder. There we go, there's my downloads folder. And I'm just going to go ahead here. We've put everything in downloads, so um, I'm going to go ahead and just extract everything one by one into folders within the downloads folder okay and so okay so lastly I just need SSH flash win okay so we've now got everything we need in our downloads folder uh, now what we also are going to need here uh, to do rather is just a little bit of folder organization so we've got SSH flash win here and uh, now what I'm going to need from the retro leap folder I'm going to need the LF 1000 files which are for the leap leap pad Explorer so we don't want the Didge ones, that's for a slightly different device. We just want these uh, these three here. I just need to select those. All the files starting with LF1000, but not the ones with Didge in them. And then paste them into our SSH flash folder that we've just created. So now we've got those three files in there as well. Uh, for the time being, um, this Windows 10 folder is the, the Datalogic USB LAN driver that I downloaded. We don't need to do anything with that just for the time being, but we have extracted it, so it's there. Okay, so going back to our SSH Flash Win uh, 0.2 Alpha folder, I'm just going to copy the path here Let's just copy that because the next thing we want to do is open up a command prompt and um, there's different ways to do that but I'm just going to go into my search button here and go command prompt. Now very important here, we need to run as administrator. We need to open up an administrator level command prompt um, otherwise um, I have found that uh, SSH flash doesn't work unless we do this or it starts throwing up funny error messages. So we've now opened that up and now I want to change directory uh, to the SSH uh, flash win directory. So I've already copied the, the location and I just right click there just to bring that up. And there we go, we're now in that folder. That's where we want to be, and we've now got all our files in there that we need. So I've now I've connected up my Leapster Explorer here, and I've connected it by USB to the computer, and I'm running it off power as well. You don't have to do that, but just um, just makes it a little more reliable and easier. I don't have to rely on batteries. So let's just try this. Let's go ahead and run uh, the batch file, which is SSH flash win 
and that's all we need to do for that. Let's open that up. Now we've got some instructions here. I'll just shut the curtains behind me so that we can see what it is we need to do here. So there's some instructions here just for using SSH flash. Uh, specifically, we've got some instructions depending on the device that we're using. So what we need to do for the Leapster Explorer is hold the LNR shoulder buttons and the hint button whilst powering on. So the hint button is this little question mark, the little white question mark button there. Um, so we, I'm going to, and the shoulder buttons are obviously on the on the top of the unit there. So I'm going to do that. I don't think I can do it while holding my camera. Hang on. Let's just do that. And if you've done it correctly, that's what you should now see on the screen. We've now got a connection. So let's go back here, press any key to continue. Now we're going to get a little menu here, which is going to ask us what type of system we'd like to flash. We want number two, which is the Leapster LF1000 Leapster Explorer. That's the device we've got. So we'll hit enter on that. Now let's see what happens. Okay, so now we're getting some things here. We've got uh, a bit of verbose logging here, which tells us what's happening. Um, now, what that has done is that's put the surgeon files down to our little unit. And so what we're waiting for now, now, this is what's going to happen, and this is what I expected to see. So basically, um, what the little program is, little SSH flash program is trying to do now, is to connect to our device, having put surgeon on there. The problem is, I'm just going to press Control C to come out of that and terminate the batch job, because the problem is, is that the network adapter that's been created, a USB network adapter that's been created. Windows 10 um, doesn't pick this up correctly, which is a bit of a, a bit of a pain uh, to say the least. But I have managed to find a workaround, and that is where our let's just go down here. That's where our Data Logic USB LAN driver comes in. This is a sort of a general purpose driver. It's for something else really, but I found that it works uh, with the Leapster device. So now that we've got Surgeon loaded on here, what we need to do is we need to fire up Device Manager, which you can do, I've got, I think I've recently opened it up. So just to show that you can do it, if you type in device there, it should be one of the first things that comes up under Control Panel. So now if we look down our list of stuff, we should now have now you see here what we've got, what it's come up as is a generic USB EEM network adapter. And it actually says that that should now be working correctly. Uh, but unfortunately it's not, uh, or we're not seeing it. So what I do uh, with this, or the, the workaround that I found, was we want to change the driver. We say we want to update the driver, browse my computer for drivers, now what we're going to do is we're going to have a look in our downloads folder and there's that Windows 10 folder which contains the uh, the data logic driver. Now I've got a feeling if I do this it's no it's not going to like that so we're going to just do that again go update driver again I think what I actually have to do is let me pick from a list of available drivers then go have disk then browse for our data logic driver which we've put in downloads let's just drop down there and go into downloads windows 10 windows 10 and there's data logic let's go open let's hit ok now finally we've got what we want so we want to install the data logic usb lan adapter we'll get a warning because it doesn't think that it's compatible but thankfully for us it is and there we go it's installed the driver now what we should now see 
in Device Manager is that it's now changed to a Datalogic USB LAN adapter. And that's great, that's what we want. Now the next step here, it won't have assigned the correct IP address that we want to the, um, to the adapter. So if we go down to our network and internet settings here, again there's probably a quicker way of doing this but I found, I found my way to do it and I'm sticking to it. Now what we should find here is that we're going to have another, um, or th that Ethernet 3, we're going to have another connection in addition to whatever connections we already had. You see there's my Wi-Fi connection, but we've got Ethernet 3 here, and that's really the one that we want the properties of. We don't want to go on properties of that. We want to go change adapter options, find Ethernet 3. Now what's that? That's Ethernet 2. Ethernet 3 and we can see that's the one we want because it's got data logic USB LAN adapter. That's the one we want So let's go on to the properties of that device And we're going to want IP protocol 4 Okay, so let's hit OK on that Oh my mistake My mistake there we actually want properties not okay so what we're going to want to do here is actually specify the IP address that we want to use. Now the range that um, Surgeon is on um, is 169.254.8. Now it's on that range and I generally just specify a, you know, 10 or 12 or something like that. Because the device, this device, has actually taken on 169.254.8.1. So we just need to be a different address on this adapter, and that should be fine. Uh, 169.254.8.12, that's a uh, different IP address. So if we hit OK on that now, and we also hit Close, and we see that's still enabled, and now that's perfect. So now what we have done is we've configured the USB LAN connection, which is this here. We've configured this. It's called Ethernet 3 on here. We've configured this to have the correct IP so that we should now be able to see Surgeon. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go back to SSH flash win. We're going to run it again. We're going to say OK to that. We're going to say we want um, to do number two, which is our LF1000 Explorer. So let's see what happens now. Okay, so we've got an error. So I'm just going to pause the video there because I'm going to see what's happening. Okay, so we, the reason why we saw all those errors, I, I, I actually haven't done anything else. I just let it run. Uh, it was just because it was trying to do the first step again, um, which it didn't need to do because it's um, it, we're already in Surgeon. So it doesn't need to, it, it couldn't find the device to run Surgeon again. But once we get past that bit in the batch file, there we go. You can see that things are now happening. We're flashing the root system, root file system. Um, and uh, what the system is doing now, we're writing the root FS image, which is the, the retro leap, one of the retro leap files that I put in the SSH flash win directory. So that's looking good. It does just take a little while to to push that down to the device. We should still see on our screen that green screen with things with showing our connection there. Now I'm just waiting. Okay, that looks like that's finished doing what it needed to do. Now we'll get this question about formatting the ROMs partition. So the ROMs partition um, is, you know, essentially the area where we're going to put all of our uh, games and things. Um, you should do this on the first flash of Retro Leap. So we'll say yes to that. And we'll hit enter. So there we go. It's going ahead and just giving that format. Um, as you'd expect with a format, it's just finding a few bad blocks and, and marking them. So that's all fine. And now... So we've reached the end of the script, it's rebooting the host, so you can see now this is rebooting, and there we go, look, we've got the nice Retro Leap logo on there, and we've booted into um, G-Menu uh, NX, which is the Leap 
leaps to explore a version of retro leap as i think i've alluded to earlier in one of the other uh, earlier in this video um the more powerful devices uh the leap pad lf2000 devices like the leap pad 2 leap leap sticks leaps to explorer gs um, and above um will be retro retro arch based but for this device this is a um this is not as powerful a device so it, it makes more sense to go with the standalone emulators so the emulators you get uh, by default on retro leap are oh boy which is game boy emulator we've also got pico drive and we've got pocket snes so it's those three um, on there but we can see that we've successfully managed to flash it um and we can use our directional buttons and it all seems to be working well so that's the end of this video i think uh, or the scope of this video just to show you about flashing the device um, i'll try and do another video soon which then shows us how to do things like um, use ssh to get into this device now that we flashed it and also um, use um, SCP or rather WinSCP to transfer ROMs and files between um, between computer and device. So hope that's uh, given you something to think about. I think I've just managed to power off the device. Let's see if we can. Oh no, there we go. We're back on again. So anyway, so I hope you've enjoyed the video. And um, yeah, um, I'll, uh, as I say, I'll uh, put some more videos on uh, as and when I can for other aspects of uh, this process. Okay, thanks.